Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levy and these are my observations on a Chinese made Aloris style quick change tool post AXA size. My experience with this style of tool post is based on the single sample that I purchased and you see it in this photo after I massaged it into good working order. So let's take a trip down memory lane where I had it mounted on the lathe in the as received condition. Okay, so I'm going to place a tool holder in here and tighten it up the way I normally do to where it feels snug and tight and cozy. And you can see that the handle of the tool post is pretty much parallel to the top slide of the compound wrist. So if I take it out and I put it into the other dovetail and tighten it to the same kind of feeling of um, <clears throat> solidity and snugness, uh, you can see that the handle of the tool post holder is much farther to the left. So there's definitely an asymmetry in uh, the action of this tool post. And also the feeling of how this locks down is really spongy here because it it's starting to lock here and I kind of end up here. Whereas if I go to the other dovetail, it starts to lock up about here and then I, I have to swing it much less to feel the same resistance. So the mechanics of this uh, tool post are not terribly good, although it does function. I have to say that it does work. Uh, and it's not uh, terribly well made. Uh, if there's vibration uh, from cutting, it can knock this handle loose and it can wiggle around here. Although it's not loosened the tool holder, the tool holder is still in there really snug and tight. It just uh, it just knocks it so there's all this play and you can see the tolerances on this thing are pretty darn sloppy. So let's take this off the lathe, put it on the bench, take it apart and see what's in it. So here's the tool post on the bench. And I'll just remove the handle here. I don't know if you can see this, but the handle itself came with uh, an alarming number of pretty deep scratches and is pretty ugly. Now I've taken this apart once before and when I did so I was surprised that just an ordinary uh, pair of um, snap ring or circlip pliers like these were, were sufficient enough to actually undo the big nut here. I was expecting it to be really, really tight and yet it came off with virtually no resistance uh, as you just saw here. And this, this unscrews and there's a threaded portion at the end. And then this collar unscrews in the clockwise direction to reveal this really coarse uh, double start thread. I believe it's a double start thread which engages the uh, the threads or teeth on the uh, movable dovetail portions. Now the dovetail teeth can be seen here, uh, but it's only the very the very tips the very tips of the uh, teeth on these uh, have been uh, machined. The rest is just rough casting. Uh, now it doesn't seem to be too impressive. 
Neither the sliding dovetail, the teeth on the sliding dovetail, nor the threads on the fat lead screw appear to be particularly hard as I had no trouble marking them with a file. And the inside here is, you can see this, is, you know, been bored out and uh, machined. One big source of the, uh, all the wobble and play that we saw earlier, uh, the uh, outside diameter of this part is uh, considerably smaller uh, by about 20 thousandths or a half millimeter than the uh, inside diameter of the bore that it fits into. So, uh, I would say that's pretty darn sloppy. And the bottom thread here just threads into the bottom thread uh, in the body of the tool holder. So you can see how this works when you turn the locking lever. The uh, thread, of course, moves and engages the uh, teeth on the sliding dovetail and moves the dovetail up or down depending upon which way you turn the collar. Uh, now one of my issues with this is that the action of the two dovetails is uh, quite unequal and the dovetail on this side has actually um, is actually a little bit too narrow overall, so the locking lever tends to go very far towards the end of its travel. So I intend to address that by putting in this four thousandths of an inch or 0.1 millimeter piece of shim stock right here, just super gluing it. So it will essentially push the sliding dovetail out a little bit wider so that the travel of the locking lever will lock the holder in place sooner rather than later. Here you see the dovetail shim glued in place. From a piece of old galvanized steel plumbing pipe, I machined two rings or bands that effectively increase the diameter of the center column so that it fits into the mating bore without excessive clearance thus eliminating that particular source of play. The bands having only about a quarter of a millimeter wall thickness, I didn't feel I could successfully machine a single full length piece, so I just super glued one onto either end of the column. So here's the tool post reassembled and back on the lathe. And um, the play in the collar here, the locking collar, has been virtually eliminated. I'm actually pushing and pulling on the handle here and there's hardly any play at all now due to those uh, two circular shims that I put on to the uh, central shaft. And if I put on a uh, tool holder, and lock it down firmly. You can see that the handle locks <clears throat> in the proximate position as you see it, um, which is normal for that side of the holder. And now if I go to the side of the holder where I installed the shim and lock it down firmly, it also ends up, the handle also ends up in about the same place, uh, rather over here somewhere, which it would be very close to um, the uh, full extent of the travel. So um, <clears throat> that's the full extent of the travel and I was getting pretty close to that on some of these holders. Another thing I've noticed when the tool holder is locked down on the, the left side of the tool post here, it's, the handle is less likely to uh, shake loose uh, than before. So, in other words, <clears throat> vibration during cutting could actually cause it to uh, come, come loose, as I showed before. Now, this does not mean that the 
holder is unlocked, it's still firmly in place. And I think this is, this must be backlash between the uh, the big um, lead screw inside the uh, holder body and the teeth of the uh, sliding dovetails. But it seems to have less tendency to uh, want to come come into this uh, loose position here. So overall, these uh, little improvements I made, I think, uh, definitely improved the function in the uh, holding of the tool holder on this side. Uh, the fact that there's <clears throat> very little play now in this collar is nice. It feels better. Uh, I, I'm not sure that the play in the collar was of any uh, functional consequence. And the last thing I did was um, I reworked the handle here and uh, took out most of the uh, big ugly scratches that uh, the tool post came with. Looks a lot better now. Doesn't look so beat up. So that's the story on this imported tool post. If you buy the high quality version, I suspect you would get tighter tolerances and hardened components. Would I buy this for a commercial shop for everyday use? Certainly not. But for a home shop machinist like myself, it's serviceable and does the job. Maybe you can get a better sample than I did. Thanks for watching.